Hello once again, I'm King Link and I'm here to answer two questions that I keep hearing. The one that I keep hearing from other people is, uh, should they go to E3? And of course, uh, that's a common question. The other question is, what is your favorite game or what game do you love from E3? So yes, we will tackle both of those as I talk about E3 and crown the game of the show for one last time. Now you should be seeing images from Borderlands 3 on the screen. I did finally get the press kit. I feel like it should be showing some of their content since I missed out on it the first time. I'll also put up some Borderlands 2 footage from their new DLC. If you haven't heard, there's free DLC. Definitely grab it, it's the right price. So the question will be, should I go to E3? And honestly, the answer is very different depending on a lot of factors. Now, before we get into anything E3 related, let's talk about the big problem. The show is in one of my least favorite cities. Now, I did live in LA for about two years. It's easily one of the most expensive cities I've ever lived in. I know San Francisco is higher and New York feels about equal. Uh, traffic is bad, hotels are expensive, traveling to it costs a lot, Parking is like 25 bucks and up no matter where you go, um, and amenities cost more in every way, and food prices are outrageous, even outside of the show itself. So really, if you don't already live in the LA area, that's a big problem. Personally, I live about three hours south in San Diego, but I have family in Orange County, which gives me about an hour commute to the convention center. The idea, though, is... Travel is very costly, and if you don't have a support system already in LA, you're talking about a huge expense before you even look at the show itself. Now, the cost for the show itself does vary. If you are in the industry in any way or can get a company to say you are, you can go for free. Media, if you're a properly sized outlet, you can also go for free. These are obviously the best ways to go. I've done industry for five years previously and media for the last year. No question, the media experience was better, but industry is still nice. So, if you're not really part of the industry, it's going to be between $150 to $250 for a single pass. The first thousand passes were sold for the $150 for some reason, and we're going to be talking about the price in a little bit, but if $150 to $250 is a lot of money to you, and I'm going to be honest, it's a lot of money to me too, really don't go. But if you're still interested, well, let's ask why you want to go. There are a couple reasons people say. Now, the first is to get a job in the game industry. You know, I'm not going to say it's never happened or it can't happen, but really don't go to E3 expecting that. Because it really doesn't happen that way, especially if you don't have an outstanding portfolio. But if you do have an outstanding portfolio, well, I mean, really just apply normally if possible. People don't go to E3 to hire people that often. Now, the next is something I've heard from a couple people this year. Uh, they wanted to see celebs, YouTube personalities and all. I'm going to be honest. I mean, you're not going to see celebs that often at E3. Sometimes they'll be on stage. Uh, I once got a photo signed by Ashley Birch that I was thrilled to get. I still have it. And there can be events to meet uh, celebs or at least see them up on uh, stage. But it's not heavily about that. Now, this year I did see Andre Meadows, probably better known as the Black Nerd from Black Nerd Comedy. That was actually pretty awesome. Uh, I did run into Jesse Cox and was able to talk to him quickly. Also very cool. And I did see a wonderful smile on Gerard Khalil's face. He's better known as the Completionist. And I ended up shaking his hand. Now, on the other hand, last year, I think I saw no one. So it's really random, but it's cool when that happens. Now, personally though, I found that when I was sitting down at the Avengers uh, presentation, I looked up and I saw the producer on the game was actually a guy I worked with years ago named Tyler. Seeing Tyler was awesome, and while I didn't get to talk to him that much, it's those meetings that make E3 special. I actually saw a buddy from here down in San Diego, I saw a guy named Alex that I worked with at Volition years ago, and moments like those are my favorite reason to go to E3. But meeting people in general is going to be hard. The third reason that people want to go, really the big reason, is they want to play the newest and greatest games. Oh boy, now this is not a bad reason. If you're in the industry and you just want to play one game, definitely go. But the problem is, unless you have a way around those lines, and honestly there's not many ways for anyone but media, you're going to be standing in very long lines. Um, also, the lines will get capped as well, but even when they're not, well, 
This year's Nintendo's lines were all two hours long. Cyberpunk was an hour, but capped fast almost every time. Um, Borderlands, I've heard, was about two hours. Watch Dogs Legion was also two hours. If lines are two hours and you get a 20-minute demo per line, you're talking about maybe spending 10 hours at E3 and only seeing four games. In addition, some games were giving away tickets and appointments to everyone. If you got one of those, great. If you don't, well, standby was a thing, but it also wasn't the best experience. In addition, Game of Passes missed the first three hours of the first and second day. That's even less time to play these games. Now, the point is, you might see only three to four games per day, or less, even if you have to get in lines, and the majority of time is standing around. It's kind of like Disneyland, but the rides aren't as unique. You eventually get these experiences at home in under a year. That's even if you get to play them. Cyberpunk, Watch Dogs Legions, and Psychonauts were unplayable, even by me. So you can get the same experience by watching videos about this at home. Now, let me talk about the last reason and show you some stuff. On screen is going to be pictures of my awesome loot. This is the stuff I got from the show floor, or at least what I haven't lost already. Now, there is some decent stuff here, but three months from now, it's just crap that's going to be taking up space. I actually have a box from the previous E3s. If you love Watch Dogs, the mask is really cool. If you love Borderlands, that mask is cool. I do love Sega and Final Fantasy. These shirts are definitely getting worn. Actually, about 90% of my wardrobe is actually shirts from events or given away at work. Um, and the pins, I don't know. I don't really get them that much. But honestly, it's cool. But if someone had asked me for this stuff, I probably could have given it away without a second thought. I mean, the Cyberpunk visor, okay. I know they were giving out jackets for the private media shows, but most of the stuff on the floor gets nothing or something kind of minor. Like the big stuff, the Dying Light 2 uh, statue that people have talked about is a private thing that was not even on the floor. It's stuff like that that just, you'll see the best loot, but it's not going to be accessible to you always. And there's so much more I can say about this, about changes to the show uh, and the format, the fact that the gamer badges the first year was, well, most studios did not seem to plan for it, let's say, uh, but the majority of the coolest giveaways were not on the floor, and the fact is, this stuff is really nice, but really, I'm here to look at games and meet up with my friends. So, should you go to E3? Well, if you're in the industry or media, especially if you're in LA or can get there for a day, Definitely. I mean, it's one of those things that you can't say that you're truly in the industry until you experience it. I mean, at least for me, I was a dev for six years before I went to my first show, but it's just a rite of passage. Now, on the other hand, the gamer badge. If you're well enough off to spend $250 for an unknown experience, then sure. But just realize the experience isn't that amazing, not at least the one that you've heard. I did get to play a lot of games, but they're all alpha games, and the gamer badge probably would have only been able to play maybe 10-ish games in the same amount of time. But in a year, almost all of them will be out, and they'll cost around $600 total for the full finished games you can enjoy and play the entire thing on your own schedule, versus the 10 games you might be able to play, they're just demos. Also, if you're going for a specific game, well, let's say you wanted to see Dying Light 2, that wasn't on the floor. Controlled by 505 Games, also behind closed doors. I actually really wanted to check out Planet Zoo. I'm a uh, fan of the San Diego Zoo, also closed door. Uh, I think most people didn't even know Psychonauts 2 was even at the show. It was tucked away behind a huge booth. The point I'm making, though, is really E3 can be fun, but it's not the best experience. And while I enjoy it every year, it's usually for reasons that aren't playing cool games. So yeah, I mean... Go if you really want to, but really be sensible about it. Now with all that said, for me, E3 was exciting with what I did see. Let's answer that other question. What was the best thing you saw? I've narrowed this field down quite a bit. The rules that I have are that I had to have seen it in a presentation or played it, but I have five games that really stood out. So let's go for it. Now number five is the Final Fantasy VII Remake. This was an extremely good demo, though it is what you saw at home. The hands-on is fun as well. But there's a lot of questions that they avoided, like how many games total, how much is it going to be in the end. Still, it was pretty fun. 
Number four is Doom Eternal. I really like this game, but it is exactly what I expected it to be. It's going to be a ton of fun, and if you play Doom and you want more Doom, Doom Eternal is even better than that. But it's still Doom. Number three, Sniper Elite VR. Honestly, this game impressed me quite a bit. Uh, I think Sniper Elite is a fun game, but dear God, in VR, it's so much better. I'm thrilled to have played it, and this might be the one game that I played that isn't coming out in a year's time, but when it comes out, I'm going to have to find a way to play this. Number two, Borderlands 3. You know, I'm actually surprised at this one, but I really enjoyed Borderlands 3's demo. I laughed, which I honestly thought I wasn't going to after the prequel, which I didn't find as funny, but I really enjoyed this one quite a bit. The new mecha character is so much fun. The multiple action skills are going to change the way that Borderlands works as we know it. And number one, Cyberpunk 2077. You know, I didn't want to give this to hands-off presentation. I don't think that's giving an honest look at the game. But you know what? Cyberpunk 2077 is really impressive. It's a game that made me want to spend 100 bucks or even more just to try it out now. It's not done yet. There's more time, of course, for it to be worked on. But I can't deny it's the game I'm still thinking about. CD Projekt Red delivered something that really stood out. And yeah, that's why it's getting the game of the show. And that's my top five. I will say every game on this list and even a couple others are definitely getting picked up when they get released. But Cyberpunk is the game that stood out the most, and I don't think I'm alone in that. And this is my last piece on E3. You know, I'm working constantly on getting back to reviews. I will be back to talk about Moonlighter before long, but I'm thrilled to have taken the break, even if I've overdid it at E3. Until then, I'm King Link, and thank you for watching.